Hello, my name is Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the human ear. Now we're told in Proverbs 20 that the Lord God made the human ear and the human eye. And they're both miracles of design, so today we're going to talk about the human ear. Um, we take our hearing very much for granted, but it's actually a very highly complex thing, hearing, our hearing is. Um, you're very familiar with our two ears on the sides of our heads. But actually your ear is composed of three parts. The outer ear, which you can see, uh, the um, middle ear, which is three little bones called ossicles, and the inner ear, which has a fantastic little harp, really. It's called the cochlear nerve. Um, and it all is amazingly cleverly designed. Um, it's an amazing example um, of irreducible complexity. It couldn't possibly have evolved, and you'll, you'll understand that as I start to talk about the human ear. First of all, what is sound? Well, sound is sound waves which actually move backwards and forwards like this. And basically your outer ear, your pinna, is basically a trumpet to collect sound. Now your ears are pointing forwards, um, and your brain can work out where the sound is coming from, the left or the right, and in front of you or behind you. So effectively, you have stereoscopic sound. Um, so the, um, the sound waves are directed down the uh, external auditory meatus, to use the correct word, but you would probably talk about an ear hole, um, down to your tympanic membrane, which you're probably more familiar as an eardrum. It's about the size of the fingernail of your little finger. And it's a, it's, it truly is a drum, and it's kept very taut uh, by the tensor tympani muscle, because the, this little drum vibrates. Now, sound actually has different frequency uh, in it. That means um, high notes have a high frequency and low notes have a low frequency, uh, and different amplitudes, and that's the volume. And the T the, the drum vibrates with the different uh, frequency and amplitude, and those frequency and amplitude is then uh, transferred to these three little bones, the smallest bones in the, in the body called the malleus, incus, and stapes, which actually multiply, um, um, multiply by a gearing effect, multiply the, uh, the, the sound, the frequency and amplitude of the sound by 22 times. Um, to then cause uh, fluctuations on the what's called the oval window, uh, which is much much smaller than the te uh, tensor tympani, uh, than the uh, sorry than the tymp tympanic membrane, um, and the oval window uh, uh, causes the fluid in the middle ear to vibrate. Now the middle ear is a miracle of design. There's no other way to put it. It's simply a miracle. Uh, within the, um, the cochlea, it's shaped like a snail. Um, this uh, this uh, membrane, um, the basilar membrane it's called, has lots of little hairs on it. Some are long, some are short, some are thick, and some are thin. And it's, they basically act just like a harp. Now, for example, if you've got a harp, if you can imagine a harp, and you would have a tuning fork, and you would strike a middle C um, on a tuning fork, what you would find is that a middle C on the harp would vibrate in resonance um, with, uh, with the tuning fork. Well, that's exactly what happens with your uh, basilar membrane. The hairs on your basilar membrane vibrate um, in resonance with the frequency of amplitude of all the sounds coming into your uh, inner ear. And then um, what happens then is something quite remarkable. At the base of each um, cell is uh, wonderful little cells which make electronic stimuli which go to, along the auditory nerve to your auditory cortex so that you hear stereoscopic sound. Let me tell you, this is a miracle of engineering and electronics. Uh, there's no way it could possibly have evolved. It's a miracle. God made the human ear. God made the eye. It couldn't have evolved. It is truly a miracle. Thank you for listening and God bless you.